Many of us have been giving warnings and still people are not listening. They're allowing the fears and the globalists and these people to be pushing narratives and people are taking it hook, line and sinker. And I want to give you guys this quick word, which is that you've got to control yourself. You have to be cautious. You have to discern what's going on right now. Now, today at the time of this video is quote unquote, the day of jihad, the Al-Aqsa Deluge Friday, for which coming from the former Hamas leader, Khalid Mashal, who called on people, quote, we should take to the streets and the city squares in Arab and Islamic cities, as well as in cities everywhere where there are communities, he said, according to uh, Memri. And th uh, there's a, a call this Friday, the Al-Aqsa uh, uh, and, and again, I'm uh, butchering the pronunciation, Al-Aqsa Deluge Friday, and people calling it the Day of Jihad, for which, again, if you look at the words he's saying, and again, I'm not supporting this man, I'm not supporting Hamas and the violence and all this stuff, but again, you have to have a controlled mind of how you interpret things, right? You look at the words itself, and you could look at it and say it could be interpreted, uh, interpreted as just demonstrations to call and say, hey, listen, for all this human tragedy, the the uh, civilian lives and all these things that are happening, maybe he's calling out to that. Again, I'm not saying I know what his intentions are. People uh, think they do, and I believe there is a, a, an, an intention and a meaning behind it. What I'm saying is that before you jump to conclusions on any one side, whether you're galvanized by all of this and saying, hey, how could you say that? How could you um, interpret this? Uh, or, or rather, people interpreting this as killing and going out and doing all these different things, uprising and riots and looting and this stuff. Maybe he was saying, and again, I'm playing devil's advocate, maybe he's saying protesting calmly and in a peaceful manner. Now, I, I'm only saying this because we've been through this in the United States. I'm only saying this, again, to look at it from a balanced point of view instead of quickly jumping to the conclusion that this man is the most evil man in the world and again he doesn't know christ so if you don't know christ you don't know a good you don't know good from evil right but what i'm saying is that first root yourself i'm not supporting the guy i'm saying root yourself quickly to say okay how can i take this from a balanced point of view the same goes for the other side when you're seeing propaganda when you're seeing certain things being thrown at you be very cautious. I've warned people the last couple of videos of how to take this. Now today, at least uh, from this the time of this video, there hasn't been much, but a lot of things have uh, come up in the sense that people have, I don't want to say make an excuse, but they've sort of justified having police force out there, New York, all the big cities. You have people all across the world. France, many other countries, you're seeing a lot of things come out in the sense of demonstrations and these things. And yes, people were stabbed. Yes, there are people that took this message and they went and took it to the extreme, which is not good, right? Anytime you have anybody say anything, you're going to get people misinterpreting it, using it for extremism. You're going to see people do good out of it. Uh, and I'm, I'm not even saying that a lot of these people are bad. Some people, Islamic, Arab, whatever you want to call it, they've been doing things peacefully. They've been going out, they've been demonstrating, they've been wanting a solution. And I'm not saying that I back what they believe in the sense that they don't know who God is, but their actions, right? Even their actions are peaceful in, in that sense. And the same goes for the Israeli side. Any pro-Palestinian or rather pro, uh, uh, I don't even want to say Zionist, but pro-Israel people, pro-Jew people that are extreme or peaceful. So you have you have people on both sides, on each side of the fence. But if you keep eating into the fact that, oh my gosh, we should do this, we should do that, we should believe this, we should do that, it's going to mess you up in the sense of the perception that is being formed around you. Now, I want to show this quick clip of a person who is looking at images, looking at video, and just reminding, reminding you of what the misinformation war is that's going on right now. So remember, like I've said before, when the Russia-Ukraine thing happened and I had to come out and I, have to, I had to really remind people that you're looking at it from a pro-Western, a pro-US, a pro-whatever hat. Take off the hat. Take off the bias of being a Westerner. Take off the bias of being this 
you know, I, I mean, I don't want to insert words in there, but people have a hat on that they, they have to take off. And rather, you have to put on the mind of Christ. You have to think of it in a loving, gracious, merciful, objective point of view and saying, maybe I don't know the full story. Maybe I don't know the intentions. I'm reading this incorrectly. People are saying words and they may mean certain different things or they may, may mean literally what they mean. Or it could be forced. It could be a optics play. It could be psyops. It could be straight up made up, right? Just like in the clip, video game footage. Who knows, right? So be very grounded in this time in scripture, in prayer, and be able to really discern what to do. Don't just react. Oh, I'm so fearful. I'm going to get, uh, you know, out there with my weapons and I'm going to go uh, do something about it. Don't react to news. Don't react emotionally. You have to have control over yourself. And this is what's what's not happening with so many people that are being pitted against each other, galvanized to hate. The spirit of hatred is so strong right now. You have demonic forces coming over the border and these guys are literally cursing God to their face, to people's faces. They're taking advantage of certain things and this demonic spirit that's in, in this country right now and by this country I mean the U.S. and many other countries, it's coming over because we're letting people in. And this is figuratively, literally speaking, that even though we have the borders open, even though we've allowed certain attacks, certain things to come in, this is also indicative and reflective of our own hearts, our own selves. Because if you allow fear, anxiety, worry, hatred, and demonic spirits to come in during this time, and you're not guarded, you're not uh, in defense, you don't have the full armor of God on right now, then you're going to be swayed by the ways of the world. You're going to worry about wars and rumors of wars. You're going to worry about all these things that are happening that is prophesied to come in the end times. And so be weary right now of the spirit of hatred and war. October is a uh, traditionally a a demonic uh, uh, month in in a sense. You got Halloween coming up. You have you have death, a lot of death. A lot of things happen in this month. And so this is why whether you want to interpret Red October in that way or just looking at what's happening and being and fostering fanning the flame of the spirit to allow you to get lost in it this is not right and we have to counter this by the blood of Jesus by prayer by coming to him and by and by introducing people to good and even what I do a small part of just getting your mindset right to get yourself in the right frame of mind to put on the mind of Christ to take off these other biases Stop moving in the ways of the world. And so I want to give you guys this quick word. Take it. A lot of people won't. They're still not saved for that matter. They don't know God or they're just allowing the flesh to override them, to control them. And you cannot have that at this time. God wants to elevate us, raise us to this next movement, this next generation, this next chapter of what is to come. And this typically happens before a breakthrough, before victory, before a huge sweeping movement. You have thick spiritual warfare that is manifested physically, as we're seeing now, the chaos that's ensuing. And again, I'm not saying that it's not going to stop anytime soon. You're going to have a bit of a mess before things get better. You will have collateral damage. You're going to have people dying. You're going to have a lot of sad things happen, tragedy. Many things happen before it gets better. But This is part of the Great Awakening, part of the Great Shaking that's happening right now, sadly. But the the best thing we can do is to elevate ourselves spiritually, uh, in wisdom, knowledge, to really be cautious during this time. So ask the Lord, what what should I do? How should I act? And don't just say, oh, it's not my problem. I don't need to uh, handle this or think about it. Or I just want to brush it under the rug. Because certain things, after a certain time, they, they get to your doorstep right? They get to you and it impacts your life, your livelihood, the kids, right? Your friends, your community, your church community. It's no more can you just say, oh, you know what? I don't want to have a position. I'm going to, you know, offend people. And so I'm not going to do anything, say anything or act out. I'm going to do the safe things. It's coming to your doorstep. Be ready. Be right with him. So love you guys. Talk to you guys very soon.